Dark Moon Doll, and today, actually tonight, because this is an evening show, I finally got my camera on my phone all charged up so that I can do a video in response to uh, a recent uh, comment that someone had posted to me. They asked if I would do a tutorial on the beads that I make. I have several tutorials on this channel on the beads that I make, uh, dreadlock beads, paper beads, fabric beads. Um, and I'll leave all these links in the description below so that you can reference it and check it out for yourself. But yeah, those are the, all the different types of beads that I make. I also make, sometimes if I can get a hold of some bamboo, I make bamboo beads, uh, dreadlock beads. And I also make, um, what was it? I've been experimenting with is paper clay beads. So, and also I've been experimenting with uh, lint clay beads, not dirty lint, but if you empty out your uh, lint ca catcher in your dryer, take it when it's fresh, the lint, and then you mix it with polymer clay and you can shape it into some beads and the beads will form really hard. Um, kind of like, I don't know, I can't, it's almost like concrete, it's so hard. So yeah, um, I can do an up-to-date up tutorial if you guys would like. Um, you could be specific as to exactly what kind of beads you'd like to see. I'll, use, I'll show you guys some of the beads that I make in case you're unfamiliar. And you can also check out my um, art and creativity uh, playlist. And that's where I have the tutorials on there. But I'll leave the links in the description. So here's a cloth bead that I made. <clears throat> and it's hand painted. So basically what I did to make this cloth bead is that I uh, first I took a scrap of fabric and I wound it around a, I think it was a marker. And um, I sewed this in, the ends together with just thread. After I did that, then I came in and painted it with acrylic paints. I let the acrylic paints dry for quite a while because I put a thick amount on to the fabric. Excuse my fingernails, I've been painting all day. <laughs> but yeah, so that's how I made this dreadlock bead. And basically what I did was also to keep the color from coming off or fading, I put a... Uh, an application, actually two applications of Mod Podge on there. And Mod Podge is a sealant that you can put onto these beads in order to keep them, um, you know, keep the design on there. So the paint doesn't chip off or anything like that. And it makes it water resistant on the outside of it. The inside is still cloth, as you can see. But yeah, this will be great for a dreadlock bead. You can use it for jewelry too. So um, you can even use, if you don't have uh, dreadlocks, you can also use it to um, adorn your hair. If you braid your hair, you could put these on the ends of your, of your braids. So yeah, yeah, I like these a lot. And um, I have a few of these, but not a lot of them. And I plan on making more as well. So um, yeah, and that's just one of the type of beads that I make that's cloth and painted. Now this is a regular cloth embroidered bead. Um, hand embroidery. So basically what I do is I, um, I think it's upside down. <laughs> so basically what I do is I do the same thing as I did with that other cloth bead. Only what I do is I start to go in there and just hand embroider a design onto it. Um, I have sold a lot of these hand embroidered beads, so I don't have a lot of them to show you. Um, I'm going to be making more. I had lost my needles, my sewing needles, so I was not able to make any uh, recently. So I found my sewing needles and um, I'll be able to uh, make some more of these beads and put them on the shop because there's been uh, at least one person I know of that is interested in buying some more of these fabric beads. Each fabric bead takes a long time to do. One bead can take me uh, two hours or, or more depending on how big the bead is. But yeah, it's a perfect hole, um, fits your red dreadlocks. I don't know if it, mine are pretty thick, so. <laughs> so yeah, you could just, let's see, let me see, try it on and show you. Yeah, I love making these, they're so relaxing to make. So yeah, that's, it adds a little bit of color to your uh, dreads, so. That one's kind of big for this dreadlock. This dreadlock's kind of, uh, this gel looks kind of skinnier than the rest, so yeah, you just, 
And also, when I sell these beads, I'll tell you what size they are as far as like, okay, they're the width of a uh, the Crayola marker, they're the width of a Sharpie, they're the width of a pencil. And um, I try to give the ample photographs on my Etsy shop so you can see if it'll fit your dreadlocks. Um, Here's some uh, recent dreadlock beads I've made, and they're made out of polymer clay. And this is one. Kind of gets you in the mood for a winter solstice with the red and white, making you feel, making me at least, feel like candy canes. So I love doing, um, I love working with polymer clay. It's a lot of fun. And I, I plan on getting more. Um, here's another one that's similar to, like, that winter solstice kind of vibe to it, candy cane vibe. Yeah, and these are dreadlock beads. Like I said, these can also be used for jewelry as well. See, there's the holes. Yeah, so let me show you another one, another dreadlock bead I made. I mixed uh, silver, pink, and blue together, and I made a little, kind of like a little skull. And it's got a skull face, or tribal, tribal bead. I consider these tribal beads. Is a tribal face on both sides. When I make the beads with uh, faces on it, designs on it, I try to um, do it on both sides so that if you're, you know, if you happen to have the dread turn one side or the other, you'll always have a design on it. So I really like how that turned out. So yeah, I'll be getting more um, polymer clay and then I'll be making more. Let me show you some of the other beads I have that I made recently, they're not necessarily dreadlock beads, but they're uh, polymer clay beads. So here we go. Yeah. And there's a huge skull I made. And this is an actual necklace that's going to be on my shop. So, oh, actually this one is on my, sh is it on my shop yet? No, I do need to put this one up on my shop. All of these are hand sculpted. There's a little witch hat on there. <laughs> this is a winter solstice skull and uh, little candies on there. Um, <laughs> I had a lot of fun. And this is a little uh, little witch on here with the witch hat. And I strung it all on, um, on stretchy cord. So, yeah. These are fun to make. Um, lots of fun to make. And I do have a video tutorial on how to make these as well. So... Um, I will be doing up-to-date uh, tutorials. I'm sorry I haven't gotten around to doing that. I'm just get, trying to get used to having uh, to do videos on my camera until I get a new camera. So thanks for being so patient with me. And yeah, here's another one. Very, very winter solstice -y with all the uh, with the red and white looking candy-like. Um, I've got hearts on there, um, candy canes candies <laughs> uh a skull candy skull <laughs> but yeah these are fun it was a lot of fun to make all hand sculpted and i finish it with mod podge all of these beads on here the polymer clay beads and some of the fabric beads the fabric beads that i paint i like to um seal it with mod podge that way it won't you know the, um, it seems like with the polymer clay, when you put Mod Podge on it, it makes it harder too and resistant to breaking. Uh, if you were to drop it, it won't break as easily as if, if you didn't, uh, put a sealant on it. So I've learned the hard way, uh, when I don't put a sealant on it, the beads aren't as resilient and strong. So yeah, here's another one I'll show you. And this is the pumpkin witch necklace that I made. He's got little pumpkin witches on here. Here's a little zombie pumpkin witch. And there's another one right here. And on here I have, um, this is all hand sculpted polymer clay. Uh, <clears throat> so I've got some skull beads on here. Someone described it as being like camouflage, these colors, like camouflage skulls. So it's kind of is it's the same color as camouflage, I guess you could say. So yeah, <laughs> but yeah, these are the beads and some bone shaped beads in here too. So yeah, that's why my fingernails are so racked because I've been doing a lot of this type of work 
and the polymer clay and I've been using paints too not on these projects but on other projects that I'm working on that I've got uh, a commission some commission pieces that I'm working on but yeah I just wanted to um, touch bases with you guys and say thank you so much for being so so positive and so um, patient with me um, I don't like going too long without making any videos for this channel so yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Um, I guess it's a little bit of both of, uh, I guess it's not necessarily freeform dreadlocks. <laughs> I guess we just call this uh, art and creativity, art talk. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I'll have some a tutorial coming up soon, a new one on how to make the beads that I make. I, You know, if you have a specific bead that you're interested that I make, um, feel free to put that in the description below, in the description, <laughs> in the comments section below and let me know what you'd like to see specifically because I told you that's the beads that I've, make, I've made and I'm making is the polymer clay beads. Um, I like that. And then there's that. The polymer clay beads, like dreadlock beads. And uh, the hand embroidered beads, which are pretty cool. This isn't the best of the best, though. Um, I've sold a lot of the good, a lot of the other ones that I had uh, have sold. So, <laughs> yeah, I can't keep up now. <laughs> I'm making them, not making them fast enough. So I'm going to be making more. And probably this evening, I'm going to be working primarily on more hand embroidered beads because I've got tons of fabric and I love to work with recycled fabrics. This is, by the way, yeah, this is all hand sewn and recycled fabrics. So it uh, kind of looks like it's knitted in a way as a knitting look to it. So yeah, I like that. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining me today for Art Talk. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it inspires you to learn how to make your own beads. They're not that hard to make. They just take a lot of time and a lot of patience. So yeah, until next time, like I said, leave your comments down below and let me know specifically what what kind of beads you want to see me make um, within reason. I mean, I can't do glass beads because I don't have all the equipment to do that, but I would love to do that soon. I like, I like glass beads, but when I go to see if I want to purchase them, they're, they're quite expensive, so... Yeah, I do like glass beads, and it would be cool to make my own. So, yeah. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. I appreciate all the new subscribers, the old subscribers from the very beginning, the ones in the middle, all of you guys. I really appreciate, you know, all of your kind comments and your insightful words of wisdom that you put down in the comment section. So let's keep that going. And like I said, if you have any questions as far as how to make beads and, you know, just specifics, just let me know and I'll do the, the best I can to uh, show you what I know. So I'm not saying I'm an expert bead maker, but I just, just through trial and error, I've learned, you know, different ways to make beads. I even make paper beads, which I didn't tell you about, but a lot of people know about that. So these are the paper beads I make. It's a necklace that I made that I like to wear. Um, these paper beads are painted. Um, you don't have to paint paper beads, but I paint. I like to paint them and put designs on them. See, like I got little faces on here just for the season of, you know, this fall season with Samhain, uh, fall equinox passed already. And yeah, it's that season. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, these are easy to make too. Um, and I have a tutorial on my channel, on this channel for that as well. So please do check that out. And thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you guys soon. Oh, also, if you're interested in checking out some of my artwork and seeing more of what I do, you can check me out on uh, Etsy. I have an Etsy shop. It's www.darkmoondoll.etsy.com. You can also check me out on Instagram. It's www.instagram.com slash darkmoondoll. And then Twitter is same thing, www.twitter.com slash darkmoondoll. I'm also on Facebook as well. 
It's uh, www.trina.sandress at facebook.com. So all of this information is going to be in the description below. You can email me too with your questions if you, if you know, I might get more a quicker response. Uh, I've been really busy, so I do apologize if I didn't get to all of you guys' comments. And if you did, if I didn't get to your comment, please ask it again. And this time, maybe just email me at blacknails31 at yahoo.com. Alrighty, guys, uh, take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Brightest blessings to you all.